Hello everyone, welcome to Tara's Diary and in today's video I'm going to show you how I do 3D in Sony Vegas. So first of all, have a background and have a mask. So this is what I call a mask or a render, whatever you want to call it. So make sure you have two tracks of this, the bottom track should be the background, the top track should be this. Okay, I did a new track. Don't put anything in this track, highly recommend this. This is just in case you need to add more elements in the tracks below. And then you're gonna click here. Oh yeah, make composition child. What this does, it groups your tracks together as one. So when you click this button, parent motion, you are able to move everything together without having to move them separately. So please remember to always click parent motion if you want to move everything that's grouped together. So I'll repeat the steps again. Just click this button again to do that. If you want to put them separately again, just simply click the other button, which is the parent one. That's how you do it. So I always recommend making the parent track blank. So if you always want to add in extra tracks, you can just click insert video track and drag it underneath and it groups it up already. Because if you do have something in the parent track, it just makes it awkward and everything and you're just having to drag that in. It's like the parent track, I like it blank. <laughs> it kind of it kind of also shows what is the parent, which one's the parent. So to get this to be 3D, you want to click on compositing mode. And then you're going to change it to 3D source, 3D source alpha. Change all of them to 3D or it won't work. And then go over here, parent composite mode, change that to 3D. So everything has to be 3D or it will not work. The next step now that your tracks are 3D, first of all, click on the backgrounds track motion. What I usually do, where it says left, the left view of the 3D panning, I just keep pressing on my left arrow and I pull this image back. So what this does, the image is dragged to the back in 3D. What I do, I grab the edge of the pan and I grow it back in. So it's not going back in, it's still in the same position in the left, in the left point of view. But in the front point of view, it's still the same. So now what that's done, go to parent motion, try and move your panning. As you can notice, there's a little bit of a 3D difference. So this is kind of what happened. Your background's moved all the way to the back. So that's something I do for my projects nowadays if I want to give a 3D effect. So like this, you zoom in and you just move it. Look how pretty that is. Another way of doing 3D, my favorite way to be honest. So another thing I like doing is the sky. So you put your sky background here, add video track and add your clouds in. And then do what you did before, pressing these right buttons to group them together. First of all, click the event pan crop of the background. I right click it and I click match output spec so it's full screen. Then I'm going to make sure all the tracks are 3D source alpha. If I'm going too fast, feel free to pause. Then again, I'm going to click on track motion for the background and I'm going to look on the left point of view and I'm going to push it back. I'm going to push the sky back. Don't push it too far back, just push it at least that far back. And then zoom the background in. Go on track motion for the clouds, shrink the clouds, and put them anywhere you would like. Something else I like to do, I like to go into the clouds. I'm going to zoom it out a little bit on pan crop. By the way, I just clicked pan crop in case you didn't know what I did. And I like to just quick slowly pan it. Also make sure you move this little stick with you. Move this stick to the end and just move it slightly. So it gives you a nice realistic cloud effect. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click this track, the cloud track by the way, and I'm gonna click on duplicate track. And it's made me another cloud track. And I'm gonna click on track motion and I'm gonna move the clouds again. So this time there's two clouds. But what I'm going to do to make this more realistic is also move the clouds back. So I'm going to move this cloud slightly back, not too far back. And I'm also going to flip horizontal. So it looks like that. 
and then I'm going to duplicate my truck again, rinse and repeat. You can keep playing around with the left point of view, you can keep moving the clouds forward or backwards, change the size, do all that. Duplicate, track motion, I'm going to put this one more forward this time, I'm going to flip horizontal again, all this stuff. Duplicate track, track motion, I'm going to put this one more back. Like this is how I do my clouds for edits and I think it's really beneficial. It makes your edits pop, it makes it look like you've done a good job. And now that I've got some clouds in, I'm going to go to parent motion and I'm going to zoom in. Zooming in is where the 3D magic happens. Can you see the 3D-ness? You could zoom in and zoom out. But personally, I like to go up or down when it comes to clouds like this. So it gives a more realistic effect. If you want to have more blue background, just make the blue background bigger or you just zoom in more really like this. Don't go to the end of this because this is going to go to the end down here. That's my dog walking. So go to the end part of your clouds and just click sync cursor and you're just gonna add a keyframe. Now you can unsync it because you don't wanna keep syncing it. And now you can control where the position of the pan will be at the end. So just go slightly to the end and then make sure you select it on this keyframe and just move your pan, then you're done. Voila, now we can watch it. See how natural looking that is? And this is just with Sony Vegas. You can also do a different movement of it. What I usually do with my keyframes, I right click the first one and I change it to fast. You don't really have to change the last one, it doesn't matter. So as you can tell, it's a bit more smoother now. Just make sure you get the keyframes in the right place. The one keyframe at the start and the other keyframe at the end. You need to make sure you sync your cursors so you know where your keyframes are and unsync it once you've finally placed down your keyframes. So a lot of you will see 3D cubes and edits, all that lot. Okay, actually I can just do this. I'm going to go on solid color and I'm just gonna pick out pink because obviously pink's my favorite color. Usually I like to put a green screen behind me when I'm doing cubes because then I can see gaps. So feel free to put a green screen behind, that's optional. I'm going to do the same, just make the blank track the parent. Make sure you've got 3D on, like that. I usually recommend making sure that your picture is a square, so just cookie cutter it. So first of all, click on parent motion and change the point of view of your 3D-ness. So I haven't talked about this yet, actually, this bit. So on these lines that you can see my cursor over, this is what rotates the 3D. So I'm going to rotate it, zoom out, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click the pink track and duplicate the track. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my cursor on this line, I'm going to rotate it. And I want this to be 90 degrees, so you can just type in there, 90 degrees. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on the top point of view and use my arrows to move the picture. Okay, and that's how you do it. I've just made one side of a cube. So I'm not the best with cubes, so you might see some faults. It's not going to be perfect unless you want to go into detail with the position in numbers. But other than that, that's just how I do it really. And then you rotate the parent motion again. And this time I'm going to duplicate the bottom track. Don't duplicate the top. I'm just going to duplicate the bottom. Duplicate. And this time I'm going to do the thing I did with the left point of view and drag square back and this makes the other side because you've already got the left side done so you can easily put this one in so there we go you can see where I'm going with this we're going to go to the second track instead and we're going to duplicate the second Tara <laughs> that's the third track sorry third track <laughs> don't listen to me and then you're just gonna drag this to the back cool we've done all the sides here we're not done yet because we need to do the top bit. So right click, restart the box and just click on this top line this time. 
And this is what I mean. We haven't done this bit yet. Just duplicate any trap this time, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to restart the box of this. I'm going to go on this top line again and rotate it like this, as you can see on the preview. And I'm just going to change that to 90 degrees. Voila. And now I'm going to move it. And I'm going to move it up. Okay, I think I've got it. Yep, okay. Oh, why? what am I doing? Okay, we got the top bit done. And now to do the bottom bit, just simply duplicate the track, the light pink one, and then change the point of view of your square so you can see what you're doing. Okay, there we go. Um, you do that and... Congratulations, you made yourself a cube. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna set a starting position for my cube. Okay, unsync. And then now at near the end, I'm just going to restore the box and I'm going to rotate this like this, something like that. It would be a lot faster, it wouldn't be slow like this, but this is something you could do. Or if you want to rotate your cube, just simply do this. Just rotate it like that. It rotates like that, by the way, just a heads up. I don't know how to fix that. So it rotates like that. Or if you want to be extra and rotate the top bit, let's do that. Like, honestly, do whatever you want. It's your 3D cube at the end of the day. I'm not a 3D cube fan, as you can tell. Insert video track. Group your tracks together. 3D them. You gotta 3D them. Do not forget it. And then I'm going to go on the parent... Is this parent motion or track motion? Track motion of um, this track. Then I'm going to click on this line, the top bit, and rotate it like this. It doesn't matter how many degrees your floor is. I just kind of recommend it to be at least 90. So I know you can't see it right now, but don't panic. Just click on the front point of view of your track motion and drag it down with your bottom arrow. There you go. And what I like to do, I like to grab the end of this pan and zoom it in. There you go, so the floor is bigger. Okay, I'm gonna add in another video track and then drag it in and change that to 3D. I'm just gonna get a character, a random character for this. This is a little quick tip I have. Please don't put a character on the floor if the bottom bit is cut off. She doesn't have her bottom shoe. And it just messes up the 3D because it looks like the 3D part cut it off. You can see what I mean? So I don't recommend that. I recommend a full body pose that generally shows the feet. And then what you can do is go on track motion zoom it out a little bit so you can see the feet or you can push it in with the left point of view whatever you want to do so this is where your character's positioned i'm just going to do a quick test pan go to the start and i'm going to actually i'm going to try be clever i'm going to rotate it like that and then i'm going to Restore my box first of all, over there. And then I'm just gonna make sure near the end that it goes up a bit. If this looks awful, I'm so sorry. I want it to be faster. I'm gonna drag this over here to this cursor. So something like that. Duplicate this track. Duplicate this. Go on to track motion on the bottom track then you're going to do this I can't explain it so just watch what I'm doing you probably understand hopefully probably <laughs> why is she so small <laughs> okay and then lower the opacity by dragging this top bar down. You could put a shadow there or you can make it a reflection effect. Up to you. I just realized the reflection effect should be the other way around. So technically this one should be a shadow. 
So, for my shadow, I just do this. Okay, so like that. So make it more spicy by adding a shadow, play with the opacity if you like. You don't have to do a 3D entrance like that, you could honestly just do this and make it go up because that also looks really nice. Like, that makes it look really nice. I hope you enjoy this random, I hope simple, tutorial on how to do 3D on Sony Vegas. If you'd like to know more on um, what to do on Sony Vegas or anything else with what I use, please leave a comment down below what tutorial you would like. I hope you'd like more tutorials like this because I kind of want to teach people now. So go out there, express your creativity. I'll see you later folks. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video and comment. It helps me out a lot. Thanks. Bye bye. Love ya.